Welcome to Batshit, a frank and funny look at living with mental illness. Oh, I'm my turn. <laughs> <laughs> you'd, you'd think he'd never done this it's before. A, <laughs> while we'll touch on several illnesses, Batshit is focused on those along the spectrum of bipolar disorders. I'm your host, Adam. And I'm your other host, Brad. And we're both bipolar. So strap in and let's see how batshit we really are. Spoiler alert, pretty damn batshit. This episode's topic, Listener Questions Part 2. Part 2! So we promised that this would be a recurring type of episode, and you're getting hit with it again. Yeah, because the second we did the first one, we started getting flooded with questions, which is amazing. Now, we want to start by saying we are not offering medical advice. We are not offering educated advice we are offering empathy and opinions mm -hmm. and sell and experience that's all we are offering so i i encourage anyone who has a question to make sure to seek a medical professional be that a psychologist psychiatrist your medical doctor you know don't take the word of two jackasses uh on a podcast as uh scripture but we're happy to share our experiences and, and hope it helps you. And especially if it's something urgent. Mm -hmm. We're trying to get to questions as fast as we can, but we record these episodes well in advance. Yep, yep. Several of them back to back. So by the time you're listening to an episode, it, it could have been six weeks. Yeah, yeah, since yeah. Since you'd written us. And if you have an urgent question, especially talk to your doctor, talk to a medical professional. And if you're having thoughts of harming yourself or someone else, please dial 988, the suicide hotline on your cell phone, mm -hmm. and speak to someone. It's it's okay that you're having those thoughts because that's what we're struggling with. Right. But make sure you get help. Don't don't wait for us to come on and, and tell bad jokes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Real bad jokes. Horrible. Uh, Just horrible. The, the worst, man. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. So our first question today, we got a voice message, which is awesome. Uh, their name is Devin. Uh, I'm going to play it for you now, and then, you know, we'll give you our two cents. I was just diagnosed with bipolar, and I have started a few different meds, um, and I'm coming out of a, a pretty severe episode, and I'm wondering how long it takes someone to get into a more normal state on meds. Like, how long do these meds take to start working? And how well do they really work? Oh, man, Devin. Yeah. Um, so again, first thing, have this conversation with your doctor. Yes, please. yes, definitely do. Uh, I can give you my personal experience. So when I first started meds, it took about two weeks before, and this is straight off my psychiatrist's notebook. They were like, it's going to be about two weeks until you notice any sort of difference. And the really tricky thing about our illness is that you may not notice it right away. You may not even notice it until you start experiencing uh, experience another episode because that's kind of the nature of what we're dealing with. But personally, I experienced a, a shift about two weeks in. Now, that being said, I recently had uh, my, my Lamictal has been increased uh, quite a bit recently, and I noticed that earlier, right? Uh, like, it only took that about three or four days for me to notice a change. But keep in mind that what your body is doing is you're, you're, you're tweaking your brain's chemistry by taking these drugs, and that takes time to adjust. So, you know, at least two weeks, Devin. And also, depending on the drug, I, I'm not sure what you've been prescribed, they, they can take a while to build up in your system, mm -hmm. and then you also have to slowly titrate up with some of them. Right. So again, you know, Adam was talking about us being on Lamictal or uh, Lamotrigine is the the generic term for it. Um, they, I was just reading the other day because I forgot to take my dose one day, and I was like, oh, I was freaking out about mm -hmm. it. And I looked it up, and it takes fourteen days to clear your system. Yep. So I would imagine, like you said, it takes two weeks to build up. I started with twenty five milligrams. I was on that for two or three weeks, and then my doctor upped it to fifty. Mm -hmm. another few weeks, and then up to 75. And for me, it was at the 75 milligram mark that my brain started calming sure. a bit. I'm now at 125. Yeah. Um, because, you know, as you guys have heard on previous episodes, we've had depressive episodes recently, and I told yeah. my psychiatrist about that. And I was actually, I went to my psychiatrist, and I was like, I was like give me an antidepressant. Mm -hmm. This is horrible. I need an antidepressant. She was like, whoa, 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 whoa. Let's let's hold on. Let's not just throw a bunch of things at you at once. Let's continue. You seem to be doing well on the Lamotrigine. Right. Let's up that. Um, but but you have to give it time. I know. 
again, I'm not sure what all you're on. I know lithium requires time to build up in the system. Yes. Um, I think and, I, I can't think of one right now that doesn't take time. Yeah, that I haven't. I haven't. I mean, maybe I'm not as familiar it, with the antipsychotics, right? Or anti-anxiety. Those are those are definitely going to be different. Yeah. But, but yes, from the experience that we've had, you know, I think two weeks. Um, the other thing, Devin, please keep in mind if you're just starting medication. The medication they give you right off the bat may not be the quick fix or may not be what you need to uh, to get right. Or may only be a piece. Or you may might need something in addition it. to yeah, it. I, yeah. Like I was saying in one of the episodes, I was on Wellbutrin, just Wellbutrin, for three years, uh, four years prior to them figuring out I also need the Lamictal. And the uh, I just got increased from 100 to 200 milligrams of Lamictal. Oh, really? Yeah. Uh, it was actually kind of unsettling because what they did was my doc, you know, talking to my psychiatrist and she and my, uh, psychologist talk. And so, uh, a psychiatrist calls me up and she's like, oh, you know, I, you know, talk to the doctor and he said this and yeah, tell me about the episodes you had. And I relate it and she goes, okay, let's go from 100 to 150. And I'm like, all right, doc, that's what you think. So let's give it a try. Like two or three days goes by, and I get like three calls, like back to back, and I'm in meetings, so I couldn't take them. And then eventually, I was able to call her back, and she's like, "I just talked to the your psychologist. Let's make it 200 milligrams." And I'm like, "Oh, <laughs> what did they say?" Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> I was like, "Unsettling." <laughs> Uh, but yeah, so I just actually just started 200 milligrams today, so we'll see what happens. Oh. Um, I've been on the 150 now for two weeks, and. Um, I haven't had a, uh, uh, you know, the last, the last uh, uh, real depressive episode was during the uh, check-in that uh, we just fired off. We just fired it off, but recorded it several weeks ago. So, so far, we're I'm doing okay. You know, I'd read, and this was anecdotal. This was other people talking. Right. First of all, good for you for reading. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah I yeah, finally yeah. learned. Yeah, good for you, bud. It took a while. But, <laughs> um, which, which really made writing difficult for me. <laughs> it was really tough. <laughs> and like reading your reading your books has been a challenge. Yeah, yeah. I finally realized I was just using wingdings all the time. <laughs> but, uh, so uh, no, I was I was reading, and this was just anecdotal. It was on like Facebook or Reddit or something. And uh, but but a lot of people were saying that the um, the standard therapeutic dose mm. is a, starts at 150 milligrams. Interesting. And there are people who are taking 450. Wow. Yeah. See, the Wellbutrin so, I'm on is 450, and supposedly that's a really high dosage. Yeah, that's what I've been told. Um, but then you know, here's another thing, Devin. Like talking to my psychologist and my psychiatrist, my psychologist who hasn't known me as long is like. We should really revisit your diagnosis. You know, you may not be true bipolar. And I'm like, awesome. So all this work I've done is for not. And he's like, no, 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 no. I'm not saying you're not on the spectrum of bipolar, but it's a wide spectrum. So maybe the way we're currently treating it is incorrect. And I'm like, oh, my. So they think maybe you're like cyclothymic? Maybe. Or... Maybe. There's also a fourth category yeah. of bipolar that's called, it's called something like, uh, bipolar disorder not yet categorized. <laughs> Which is just very comforting. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Maybe I'm going to have powers like an X-Man. I mean, So I'll great. tell you, this is total like bullshit theory I came up with. Ooh, the ooh, ooh. But <laughs> you guys can't see it, but he just put on a doctor's coat and a stethoscope. Yeah, I carry them around. <laughs> you never know when you need them. Um, anytime somebody, anytime a pregnant woman passes, I'm like, did your water break? <laughs> um, but uh, no, so I was, I since we've started this and since I got diagnosed... Uh, and, and was open about it, you know, I've discovered a lot of people in my extended circle who suffer from something. Sure. And one thing that I noticed is that there are several people who have both anxiety and depression. Yeah. Clinical anxiety and depression. And again, this is just my own bullshit theory, but it actually, when you talk about bipolar being on a spectrum, it made me wonder if that's being looked at wrong and that that's a form of bipolar. Sure. Because anxiety, sometimes you experience anxiety in mania. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's all sorts of the other symptoms that we've talked about in mania. But could their anxiety basically be low-key mania? That they're not getting the euphoria and everything, but they're getting the adrenaline. Sure, sure. That comes with it. Yeah, it's an adrenaline um, surge. I, yeah. I but I just know. found that really interesting that, mm. that clinical anxiety and clinical depression, at least anecdotally, seem to be paired a lot. It's, yeah. Yeah. See, uh, this 
this science and this um, treatment is still evolving. And Devin, I feel I feel for you. I do. Um, please don't give up. Please stick with it. I mean, the number of times that I've wanted to just get off the meds because I don't think the meds are working or maybe the meds are causing this and it's it never goes well. It never, ever goes well. So please, you know, keep trying, keep the faith, keep fighting and listen to your doctors. You know, there's they they spent a lot of money on school. They went for a long <laughs> oh, time. They're still in debt. Yeah, they're <laughs> yeah, they're um, gonna be in debt for the rest of their lives. <laughs> so they deserve us at least listening a little bit. You know what I mean? Yeah, I'd give it. And this is totally not a medical, <laughs> medically um, uh, experienced opinion. This is just my personal opinion. He, he's added a red clown nose on top yeah. of the doctor's coat, uh-huh. just so you know. Was it wasn't that like a Robin Williams? It was a Robin okay. Williams thing. Yeah. 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 Um, who they, by the way, they think was probably bipolar. At least. Yes. Um, totally makes, I mean, you talk about somebody manic. Oh my God. Oh man. You watch his old stand up. Oh, but, uh, I would give it at least six weeks. Yeah. I would recommend also, I've talked about this before, buying a mood journal and using that to track your moods. Yep. And then when you talk to your doctor again, you can, you can say you've got concrete evidence. You can be like, look, I've still been miserable you know, five days out of seven or whatever, or, Hey doc, you know, I'm noticing, you know, at first I was, I was marking myself as miserable and now I'm just kind of meh yeah, every day. And, you know, and and all that information will be incredibly helpful to your doctor, whether it's about upping your dose, adding a new drug or changing your drugs. Right. And I, I, I think about that pain chart that you see in the, um, in the emergency room where it's got like the zero to 10 in terms of how much pain you're in, mm-hmm. having that similar, you know, chart for yourself with how you're feeling could go a long way, like Brad said, into helping your doctor treat you. So, yeah, yeah Mood Journal's a great idea. Good job, Dr. Brad. <laughs> ding, ding. Again, not a doctor. <laughs> he is an actor, though. So if you need an actor for an upcoming project, <laughs> Brad is available. I'll send you my headshots. <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, makes you know, slap. I, I would also recommend, and I, I'm not sure because you didn't mention this, um, but if you're not in therapy, the therapy and the drugs go together. Huge, huge. Yeah. And, and you can't do one without the other. Right. You'll never but, make any progress. And, and here's the interesting thing, Devin, going back to my psychologist, is like talking with my psychologist and talking with my psychiatrist are two very different experiences, you know? psychiatrist is it's a medical doctor so they're going to be like so what are your symptoms and you're going to say well i feel x and they're going to take that information and give you a drug based on that (laughs) now your psychologist on the other hand is going to sit there and be like let's talk about how you feel and really get the verbiage right and really dissect the way you're feeling and you know there's a lot of different um uh spots on that spectrum of bipolar and the more dialed in you can be the better the treatment will be with the medication so having that conversation with a psychologist is going to help you talk to your psychiatrist and they can talk together like my two do and uh talk they talk probably behind my back quite a bit like it, i have this theory <laughs> that they meet up on fridays with like a bottle of wine like did you guys see what adam's doing oh with his God, hair oh these days <laughs> <laughs> and he's doing a podcast oh jeez. <laughs> Uh, but yes, so yeah, talk to a psychologist. I've I've not told anyone on my team that I am doing a podcast. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, I've kept that completely. Oh, that's amazing. Separate. Yeah. I don't know why. I just don't. I, you know, it's I I, I kind of brag about it. I'll be yeah. honest. I'm like, hey, look at me. I'm dealing with my problems, <laughs> doctors. You know? I think maybe just because I'm still so new in this process. Sure. You sure, were sure, you sure. were talking about um, the different conversations you have with your psychiatrist and your your therapist. And I remember one of the first conversations I had with this, my psychiatrist, I was like, well, let me, so I got all this guilt, right? Like there's, there, there are people I, I hurt, like, I, you know, I'm, I'm, I've got this one friend and, and she was like, whoa, 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 whoa. I just handle your drugs. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> right, yeah exactly. She's like, you need to see a therapist. <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, it's so true. Uh, oh, uh, Devin, we've kind of gotten off off track, but as we do, as we do. But hey, thank you for listening. Keep fighting. If you want to, in six, two weeks, six weeks, send us another voice message. I, we'd love to hear how you're doing, and we'd love yeah. to update everyone who's listening right now. Um, you know, we love you. Keep at it. <laughs> 
Thanks for listening. Help us continue the conversation. Leave us a comment with your thoughts, experiences, or questions about mental health. Every opinion and viewpoint is valid. Just don't be a dick. Hey friends, Brad and I started Batshit because we needed someone to talk to about our bipolar. So when looking for a sponsor, BetterHelp was the obvious choice. BetterHelp provides access to therapists via text, via Zoom, via email, via phone call, 24 hours, seven days a week. I don't need to tell anyone how broken the American healthcare system is, especially when it comes to mental illness. But the beautiful thing about BetterHelp is that they'll work with you. Go to www.betterhelp.com backslash batshit. You'll get 10% off for the first month and you'll get someone to talk to right now. If you need to talk to someone, do it. Please. We love you. All right, Brad, what's next question wise? So, our next one, um, this one's a little, little sad. No. Oh. Um, this was from Apocalypse 61 on Reddit, mm-hmm. which I say, we shit on Reddit a lot on here in, in other places. It's not the community that we're shitting on. No, there's amazing people. Yeah, in that amazing community. people sharing their stories and their experience. But that's where it should end. And the problem with anything online, we, we keep pointing out Reddit because, you know. It's, it's an it's, easy target. It's a yeah. softball lot. But Facebook, Twitter, like whatever, is a lot of people who don't know what they're talking about and present it as fact. Right. When there are legitimate resources you can go to. Yeah. We have not presented a single fact on this podcast. I hope you know that. We, <laughs> not, there are no facts I, yeah. here. It's like. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I will reiterate. I, I do a lot of research. I do a lot of reading. Take nothing I say at face value. Yep. Research it yourself independently. <laughs> In, yep. And how? <laughs> because I, I, I am fallible. Yes. Yeah. Um, <laughs> that's as uh, my wife tells me every damn day. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> um, okay. So this is from Apocalypse sixty one. My best friend just died a couple weeks ago. He had BPD and struggled with poor care, bad access to medication, destroyed relationships. The meds they put him on wrecked his body and his mind, and now he's gone. I wish he had a community of people who could have helped him. It was mostly just me and his sons. He was always so ashamed to ask for help. I miss him so much. Thank you for trying something, anything. I hope it helps someone. Uh, This wasn't a question, obviously, but it, it it resonated so hard with Brad and myself that we wanted to talk about it because... Um, I completely understand what you're saying and you're wanting to help. Um, there's, there's no answer for this question. I wish there was. It's like, it's, you're not at fault. What's at fault is, what, what's at fault is society and the way we've mm-hmm. handled these issues over the past millennia. Okay. So do I hope I know it, it, I'm not going to tell you not to feel shame because you're going to feel shame and guilt because that's just how we're wired. But please keep in mind that uh, that's not on you. That's not on you. And it's not on your friend's sons. And that's not fully on him either. And it's I know it's small comfort right now. But even if he never vocalized it to you, know that you being there for him meant so much yes yes well said because this fight that we're in feels so lonely sometimes yeah yeah and and we push people away yeah we push people away so if you were strong enough to be with him through all of this and to be his support to help be his support system and to you know uh, resist his every effort to push you away and destroy your relationship good on you we need more people in the world like you and that brought him comfort oh, very much and love, so. even if he couldn't vocalize it. Yeah, to if you. he couldn't show it to you, you know, depending on the state he was in. It, mm-hmm. but it and was, it may have kept him around longer. Yeah, definitely. When I'm in my worst, uh, worst uh, uh, episodes, and my wife is trying to help me, I do not react to it. That does not mean I don't register it. That doesn't mean I don't go, oh, she loves me so much. She is trying so hard to help me. I'm just not able to respond in the way that you should be able to respond when someone does something nice and caring and loving for you. Yeah. 
it's yeah well, it's like we've talked about before sometimes in these states you can't communicate properly no nope. yeah and so you could be feeling something very strong and very powerful and it's the the connection between your brain and your mouth is just severed yeah at that moment yeah there's yeah um so i'm so sorry from us to you for what you went through what your friend went through what his sons are going through that's awful um it's not fair uh but the fact that you're you're listening to this and i hope if i don't know how old his sons are but if it's um appropriate sharing this podcast with his sons you know might might be a good idea even if it's just to uh help give uh, some background to what maybe their dad was going through that he couldn't vocalize. I don't know. I don't know. It's just a thought. Yeah. Yeah. And don't be afraid for you to seek help, by the way. You may not uh, associate with the disorders or you may not feel like you have a mental disease. It doesn't mean you don't need to talk to someone. We've talked about that before, that people who have someone in their life who suffers from this – also need to seek therapy Yeah, if you're close to that person. And especially with a tragedy like this having occurred, you you should. You should go speak to someone. His sons should speak to someone. Yes, definitely. You, you need to get that out. There's, I, I can tell from your message there's a lot of shame and a lot of guilt and a lot of regret uh, that you you need to address. And that's not to say it's going to go away. No, no but, it won't. But you need to work through it yeah. and understand it mm -hmm. and know what know what things were completely beyond your control. Yep. Yep. Um, thank you for sharing that with us uh, because I'm, that's going to help a lot of people. Um, you sharing this story, sharing what your uh, friend went through, what his sons went through. There are people out there listening to this podcast who are in all three of those positions. And just, you know, hearing your voice is going to help. So thank you. Yeah, and stay, stay strong. I know it's tough. Yeah, stay but, as positive as you can. Yeah, and and get some help. Yep. All right. So uh, the last thing I want to jump into here um, isn't a listener question. Oh, it's from uh, uh, renowned author Joyce Carol Oates Ooh! today. I told Adam okay. I was in a little bit of a Twitter war. So here's the thing, you guys. So Brad texted me today, <laughs> and he was like, I'm in a Twitter fight. And I'm like, you're in a Twitter fight? Because like, I'm not on Twitter. And he's like, yeah, 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 yeah. Joyce doesn't know what's coming for her. And I'm, I'm sitting there going, good for you, buddy. And then like 20 minutes later, I'm like, wait, does she know you're in a fight? Or what? what's going on? Yeah, no, so I usually don't. I usually don't engage with people online very much at all. I mean, we've talked about how horrible we are in social media. Um, We're I'll trying go, to get better. We are trying. Yeah. yeah. My, my social media uh, presence is uh, log on for five minutes, scroll and see if there's anything interesting in the news, log off. Hey, I thought of a funny joke. Let me post it. <laughs> exactly. Like that's about it. <laughs> uh, I just look at pictures of dogs. That's yeah. what gets yeah. me. To, like, yeah, that's about 9% yeah. of it. <laughs> um, so Joyce Carol Oates is a uh, very – very good author. She's yeah. one of my favorite writers, uh, still living, and um, is notorious for being horrible on social media. Hmm. My favorite example Ooh. I will give you before we get into this is uh, several years ago, someone had shared a picture of Steven Spielberg on the set of Jurassic Park next to the Triceratops that's that's on its side. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And he was, uh, I think, wearing a um, uh, safari hat. And holding a rifle as though he'd killed it. Oh God! She retweeted it, saying something like, "Like this type of trophy hunting for sport is animal <laughs> abuse and blah blah blah." And everybody was like, "Joyce, it's a triceratops." <laughs> so just so you, so you understand who you're dealing with. Um, so she tweeted this today, and I wanted to address this. Um, just think, 100 years ago, virtually no one was depressed in quotation marks, because the notion hadn't come to them, nor the proviso that it was a way of bonding with other people by acknowledging or seeming to acknowledge a common weakness kept private and secret by most people 
sensibly. And then she doubled down on it. Which you should. There should be a new way to approaching depression, assuming that if it exists, Mm. it is justified and purposeful, a normal reaction to negative, stressful, unbearable social conditions. The, quote, depressed person, unquote, is not so much ill as coping, reacting to an unnatural situation. Wow. Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Um, <clears throat> Where to even begin? Okay, for starters, <laughs> everyone is entitled to their opinion. Yes. Everyone yeah. is entitled to their opinion. Their opinion may be wrong, mm-hmm. but they're entitled to it. And we're entitled to our opinion exactly. that they're yeah. assholes. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, that's just ah, um, that, okay. So first of all, let's start at the top where uh, she said a um, hundred years ago, you know, no one had depression. I'm like, oh right, because you know, a hundred years ago, no one was gay, right? Mm-hmm. No one was coming back from World War One yep, with yep. shell shock. Yeah, yeah, no, well, uh, in 1923, <laughs> right? Uh, women didn't want to vote back then a hundred years yeah, ago. Yeah. Right? No one committed suicide. Nope, no one did that yeah. either. Right? There's, uh that's just the. <laughs> You can't start an argument. But let me give you a piece of advice, people who are about to make an argument about anything. Don't reference history. It's a terrible <laughs> place to start any argument yeah. from. You know, Because like, you can find anything that's yeah. happening now <laughs> you know, has always been happening. It's always been happening. In, in fact, I'll tell you the idea of a Twitter war. Mm-hmm. Uh, somebody was texting with me the other day, and they, they, were like, they were like, this is like one of the worst things of modern society. And I was like, well, in the 1920s, <laughs> Harry Houdini and Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, who yep. created Sherlock Holmes, waged basically a Twitter war by writing editorials against each other in the New York Times for years. Yeah, it's like <laughs> what yellow like, journalism was between politicians. Yeah, it's like that's, yeah. yeah, like this shit's always existed. It's always existed, you know? as, ha- as has mental disorders. I Yeah, I mean, how can anyone look at historical figures? I mean, you see it everywhere. Yeah. You know, uh, uh, Hemingway. Oh, God. Van Gogh. Uh, Van Gogh. Uh, Lord Byron. Oh, Percy man. Shelley. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, there's, there's, King George. Yes. Now, I mean, I, there's a whole movie, The Madness of King George. <laughs> like, you know? It's in the title of the movie. <laughs> uh, okay. uh, I'm, glad you're, I'm glad you're fighting the good fight against Joyce. <laughs> Joyce Carol Thank you so well, much. Well, the reason I, I wanted to bring that up and why, why I responded so vehemently to her is, unfortunately, her opinions are common. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. The the idea that depression, quote, if it exists. So the idea that depression might not even exist. Yeah, like this yeah, is yeah. a medical condition with physical markers, not just psychological markers. We've talked about this before. There are physical markers that go along with depression. There have been tens of thousands of studies over decades. You know, 70% of all suicides are committed by someone who has been diagnosed with either unipolar or bipolar depression. Mm -hmm. And I'd wager you great money that the other 30% are just undiagnosed. Sure. Um, And so you you take this idea of if it exists, first off. I I, I don't even know what else to say about that level of ignorance. Okay, look. You know? if, 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 If you are in the wild and you say, look, there are no bears in the woods. <laughs> There's no bears. There's just no bears because I've never seen one. So there are no bears in the woods. And someone goes, well, no, bears live. They shit in the woods, too. But bears are in the <coughs> woods. You just saying there's no bears in the woods doesn't make it true. And by you uh, uh, failing to acknowledge that there are ba- bears in the woods, you're making it more dangerous for everyone else in that camp. Yeah. Everyone else in that camp, because people are going to start listening to you, you know, and they're going to start covering themselves in like deer blood and go running through the forest in the hopes that, you know, and being completely confident that bears don't exist. You saying that mental disorders are not a thing, you know, that depression is not a thing. And any of your listeners, you know, will sit there and be like, OK, I'm not depressed. Depression's not a thing. Um, this is just a coping mechanism. And I just have to fight my way through it. So I'm not going to get help. I'm not going to take medication. You're letting someone run through the woods covered in deer blood with bears, uh, bears all around. Um, that wasn't the greatest <laughs> metaphor. But I didn't hate it. Like, <laughs> no, it was, no, no, no. It's pretty good. It's pretty good. It's not bad. You know what I actually thought of uh, while you were saying that? Because uh, watching the Harry Potter movies with my kids uh, for like the fifth time. 
um, one of the best franchises, I have to say, like oh, movie we, franchises. We could talk about uh, what's her name. Oh, JK, yeah, J.K. Rowling <laughs> is a different beast <laughs> right. altogether. Speaking of Twitter wars, sorry, yeah, keep going. Seriously, but um, uh, it's it's the Ministry of Magic. Like how the the entire time they're like Voldemort is not it's not, not back. real it's not back yeah, there's, yeah. the Dark Lord isn't around blah right. blah blah and it's like you, I just fought him you saw it <laughs> See, I'm bleeding nope, my, nope. my uncle's dead yeah, it's <laughs> yeah. Like, <laughs> and then you know and it, it it's oh, oh what was that movie that Adam McKay just made about the asteroid coming towards oh uh, don't on, look up don't look up yeah now that's about the environment that's not about mental health but it's the same idea right and, and when that asteroid's about to hit Earth no one's like no one says I'm wrong. No one says, yeah. I'm sorry. They they go down with the damn ship. It's what we've talked about before, arrogant ignorance. Yep. You're you're ignorant, you're arrogant in your ignorant opinion, and you double down on it when presented with any evidence to the contrary. So with this arrogant ignorance, you hear all sorts of things from these mental disorders aren't real. Um, I don't think that they work that way. Like, I've heard that before. Sure. It's like, yeah. oh, really? Where's your medical degree from, <laughs> pal? You don't think they work? I fucking live with this shit. Yeah, Let exactly. me tell you how it works. Where's your case studies? Have you done yeah. any case studies? Yeah. But, but that's where it comes from is a lot of this you just can't understand if you haven't experienced it. Yeah. You know? And so when someone like Joyce Carol Oates thinks of depression, we've talked about this before, they think of sadness. Mm -hmm. That she thinks people are just sitting around being sad. Mm -hmm. All these people are so sad. <laughs> Why are you so sad? Just get out of it. Be happy. Oh, God. Her voice is grating. Oh, yeah. I imagine that's what she sounds <laughs> like assuming. if you look at her picture. Yeah, I don't know. Which is funny because <laughs> when she writes, I have a totally different voice for her in my head. But yeah, when she talks. I feel like I was on a panel with her at some convention or something really before, but i don't i don't remember a damn thing about it <laughs> i was probably manic um, <laughs> yeah. Um, um yeah so uh going back to the original if anyone tells you that you're not sick fuck them yeah fuck them yeah they're they're not you yeah and you know what at, at this point i don't know i go back and forth like i said i i wanted to comment on that because the level of ignorance is so dangerous there but at the same time are you ever going to change these people's opinion? No, you probably won't. I feel like in a public forum like that, it's more about about presenting that information for other people who right. stumble upon it. Yeah, but yeah, I don't know if anyone will ever change her no. opinion on that. Well, also, it's it's a it's an emotional. It's not a. It, it's not an informed it's opinion. Not an, it's it's, it's an, emotional. an emotional response. Exactly. Yeah. they are just responding emotionally to a prompt, and. It's like other hot button topics, you know what I mean? Wherever you stand on a hot button topic, uh, you know, everything from like immigration, abortion, gun control, all of it. Oftentimes, people react emotionally to these situations. And, you know, we are not getting into politics on this show. We won't even touch it. But it's really hard to have a discord with either side if no one's listening and everyone's just yelling back and forth at each other. Right. So, you know, if, if Joyce wants to be in her echo chamber and only talking to the people like her who believe, you know, more power to you. But the second someone who's on the fence about how they feel or what they need or trying to decide how they want to handle it stumbles upon that and maybe takes it for gospel, you know, fuck you, Joyce. Yeah. Completely. And her whole thing about saying it's a weakness that it was was always sensibly kept private. Sensibly that's a, kept private. That's a big fuck you. Yeah, seriously. First off, weakness? Kiss my ass, yeah. Joyce. I got more strength than my goddamn pinky yeah. finger. Let's do push-ups, Joyce. Yeah, Let's come on. Do... Come on. Let's <laughs> you do it. You and me, Joyce. <laughs> Wookie bitch, Joyce. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You squat? You squat, <laughs> Joyce? Let's do this. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna go around for you know. Wouldn't that be amazing though if like we met Joyce and she was like ripped out of her mind, yeah. like just like <laughs> she's like I, I just competed in the CrossFit Games. <laughs> oh, <laughs> but then also the idea of like sensibly kept to yourself. Yeah, no. that's what drives people to kill themselves. Yeah, you have to talk about this. You you have to, otherwise you go crazy. Not from your mental disorder, but because of you not knowing how to deal with your mental disorder and that you think you're all alone in this world. And that, and you're yeah. not. No one is alone. And that's one of the things that drove me nuts when I saw it that I think really pissed me off is because the first thing I imagined, because she's an incredibly acclaimed author. Yep. So imagine that's your favorite author. You're struggling with depression and you've been having suicidal ideation for the last week. And you log on to Twitter and you see that shit from your favorite author. Gee. You know? Gee. It's it, it hurts. Don't. Mm, don't. Mm, 
This is really <laughs> like it's funny. It's it's, it's kind of hard for me to phrase because, like you said, Reddit has an amazing community, right? Mm-hmm. Like there's an amazing community on Reddit, and a lot of information can go back and forth there, whether it be stories, medical experience, all sorts of stuff. It, but at the end of the day, no matter what, take anyone's opinion with a grain of salt ours included yeah if somebody throws a piece of information at you and it sounds good don't just stop there yeah don't Don't just accept that yep go do a little bit of research yeah and we've talked about before some sites are better than others you have to kind of learn to parse the internet some of these things you come across are gonna look legitimate and be bullshit yeah you know i i always say like look for somewhere in whatever you're reading, that it references peer-reviewed research. Yes. And I want to reiterate, don't waste your mental energy or your physical energy trying to convince someone like Oates that you're not sick. Like you, it's, you know, Brad's Twitter war that he wants to start, as long as it doesn't start draining his mental health, because think of all the the, the, the vitriol that's going to come back at Brad when he starts this... Twitter war. Oh, yeah, I, I call it a Twitter war. It was like five tweets of me being like, <laughs> being like, here's some actual science, lady. But you know you'd think I mean? as a writer, she would understand research. Yeah, no, no, uh, no, 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 no. She hadn't <laughs> do that. She didn't do it before that. Yeah. Uh, but again, opinions are just opinions. Your experience is your experience. Remember that. Um, please keep writing us questions. Please keep sending yeah. them. Uh, through you, our social media is the best way to hit us up. Um, we have a instagram account which i haven't really posted to yet but i'm working on it called uh, mental health is bad shit we have a twitter account which is bat shit podcast and we also have a facebook which is just bat shit podcast so uh, and we're on youtube so we're all over the place so yeah. you know and and reddit and reddit we're <laughs> we have reddit. a reddit so thread reach out to us yeah. I, we want to hear your questions we want to hear your experiences you know and leave we, us more voice messages please, please. yes i i want to be able to respond to them i cannot yeah. respond to them i'm sorry i called spotify i yelled at spotify because <laughs> there were several where like that's where devin's came from and i wanted to be like devin oh you're heard i totally hear what you're saying but i couldn't i couldn't reach out uh, and yeah. i and i apologize for that but uh please keep writing us questions keep yeah. giving us your thoughts Keep giving us your adulation because our egos are so fragile. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, Adam, Adam jokes, but it, it it really is so touching when you guys reach out and tell us how much we're we're helping you. Yeah, just by listening to us be jackasses. Jack, because we are here. jackasses every day. Yeah, and no one comes up to us and yeah. is like, "Thank you for being a jackass." I'm never in the grocery store and somebody's like, "Hey, thanks for that joke about the banana." Yeah. <laughs> That really made my day. (laughs) Now I just picture Brad standing there in the produce section, like looking around, waiting for someone to come pick a banana so we can tell his bad dad joke. Yeah, I'm sitting there with a mic. I'm like, hey, you guys ever eat apples? What's with apples? What's up with apples? What's the deal with apples? Oh, also we have a website. We do have a website? Yeah, oh, it's that's right. batshitpodcast.com. See, that's awesome. Or if you don't want to type in the word shit, it's living-with-mental-illness.com. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. Oh, all right. But batshitpodcast.com. But we have a contact form on there. Yep, so you can reach so you, out to us that way, too. Yeah. Um, uh, share this with anyone who needs it. Please keep listening. Please keep sending questions. Please keep sending us comments. Thank you. We love you. Keep fighting. <laughs>